Hey there, Squirrel Crew. So today I am going to cover some of the tips that I use to evaluate the best dive conditions. Um, because let's face it, we have all been in those dives that just are completely crap. Uh, sometimes we go out there and we're like, oh, let's go for a dive. And we just kind of go willy nilly and we go to our favorite spot. And yeah, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's really bad timing. <laughs> So here in California, we have tons of shore dive. I'm gonna go over some of the um, tools that I use to evaluate our shore dives and some of the conditions that I look at to make sure that we are gonna get the best opportunity to have the best experience. So hang tight and let's go ahead and dive on into this. The first thing we're going to do to evaluate the dive conditions is go to this website, Surfline. There's other websites, but I kind of like Surfline. Hit the search bar. I'm just going to type in a beach that I'm familiar with. Um, and the first thing we're going to look at is down here, I'm going to go over to the tide chart. So looking at this tide chart, some of the things you want to consider when you're diving is to make sure that you're going on an incoming tide and like a little bit before high tide, like 35, 45 minutes before high tide. You can go right at high tide, but then remember that's when the ocean is starting to go from an incoming tide to an outgoing tide where the ocean is pulling the water away from the shore. We want to go when the ocean is bringing in all that fresh water towards the shore, so it's rising. So seeing here, um, we have a high tide at 12.22, so I'm going to want to dive somewhere around 12 o'clock, and that's almost right at the crest of the high tide, as you can see on the tide chart. Um, if I'm looking at tomorrow's conditions, then I would want to dive somewhere around 1 o'clock, as the high tide is at 1.24, so I'm going to be diving somewhere in here. Good thing about these two particular days, which is today and tomorrow, um, as you can see from the transition from today's high tide and low tide is there's not a whole lot of volume of water being moved. Um, unlike here, when you go from a high tide to a low tide, look at all that water that's uh, being moved. It's really dropping significantly. Um, but today it's not really dropping that much um, between the two tides. So, or between the high tide and the low tide. So that's still a pretty good indication that the ocean's going to be a um, little less turbulent, a little less, uh, a lot of bottom kick up, um, considering your conditions too, whether you have a sandy bottom or sandy bottom <laughs> or a uh, rocky bottom definitely helps with visibility. Um, but that's the first thing I look at. Weather is always something you want to consider. All this overcastedness um, is probably going to make for less visibility than I would like. So pay attention to that too. These nice sunny days are obviously a lot better for visibility. Um, and overall, it's going to give you a better enjoyable experience as far as the energy in the atmosphere. And then I just kind of work myself up from there. So we're looking at the wind. It's uh, pretty high, you know, five, eight knots coming in at 12 o'clock. Remember, I'm keeping my entry time at 12, uh, 12 p.m. And at that time, it kicks up to five. If I were to go tomorrow around one o'clock, the wind is a lot better, but then it kicks back up by three. So tomorrow actually might be a little bit better conditions. Um, as far as wind. Uh, things to consider with the wind too is which way it's blowing, if it's blowing onshore or offshore. For those of you who don't know, an onshore wind is wind that comes from the shore to the ocean. It's onshore. An offshore wind is wind that's coming from the ocean to land. When diving, it's a lot better to have an offshore wind because that wind will be pushing the waves down uh, as opposed to an onshore wind when the wave is coming and the onshore wind's coming in the opposite direction, then it makes the wave stand up and then you get the traditional crest and you really don't want those just beating over your head as you're trying to get into the ocean. Looking at the swell charts, there's always different swells and different sets of swells in the ocean. What I'm looking for here for a good dive condition is a lower set in between because that will keep the bottom from being stirred up. The longer the set, here, take a look at this image here. The longer the set of the wave, the deeper that energy is gonna transfer down to the ocean floor. 
So if you have a long wavelength in between the two crests of the swells, the deeper that's going to go, the more energy that wave is going to have, um, and it's going to peak up a lot more by the time it hits the shore. So that's where you get your big waves from, which is great for surfing, but terrible for diving. Not a surfer. Um, so, so we're looking for a short wavelength between um, and very low volume of water being moved uh, up and down. So that's kind of what we're looking for in this report. Oh, jeepers, where'd it go? Okay. Bring that back up again. Okay. So we're looking for a low wavelength. 14 seconds is actually a really long wavelength. Um, and that's actually nice for surfers, but also look at the uh, height. It's only, you know, two, in you know, two inches or 0.2 feet between uh, swells. So that's really, really small at a long duration. That's still, in my opinion, okay. Same thing here, um, 0.8 feet. So that's uh, 10 seconds. Um, that's getting a little bit more aggressive, but still okay for dive conditions. This one here is what worries me. You're at 1.1 feet at 15 seconds. Now keep in mind, as I'm looking at these, this is at 6 a.m. So if I want to dive about 12 today, I want to make sure that my cursor is over the correct uh, time on the swell charts. So I have two seconds at, or 2.2 feet at 15 seconds. That's nice. 0.7 at 11. That's okay. Uh, one foot at 16 seconds. That's pretty significant and probably something I wouldn't really care to dive too much in. Um, and then 1.45 seconds, that's still okay. It's a very short wavelength, although it's cresting really high. Um, the swell, the, the uh, wavelength is pretty short. So that's something that I'd be willing to battle with. The one that concerns me here is the one foot at 16 seconds. That allows for a lot of momentum for the wave to build. Um, and and get that uh, transfer all that energy down to the bottom. So that one does concern me, but overall, you know, I'd say this is worth going out and, you know, at this time, uh, considering all the conditions. You can also see the little arrow on where the swell is coming from. So if I have multiple swells, this one's coming from the west, this one's coming from the south, southeast, southwest, and west. So we do have a little bit of a cross swell, um, which can create for some really turbulent water as well. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at this. As far as the surf height, this is great. This is saying it's going to be pretty flat. A lot of that is contributing to the direction of the wind that's pushing everything down. Um, but these, these swells here, especially this one here, one foot is 16 seconds, is showing me that there's going to be um, some visibility reduction. And this, this wind here, even though it's coming in, you know, off from offshore, then it, it's pushing the waves down, which is keeping the waves down. But there's still a lot of movement of water up and down, really kicking up that visibility and then the cross swells. So overall, I'd say this is um, a good dive. You might have some visibility issues, especially with its location um, and what the swells are doing. And this is just kind of how I evaluate dives. So... Feel free to play around with this. It's a good indicator on exactly when to dive, um, what kind of conditions you might be facing. But keep in mind that that can all go to crap as soon as you get out there and you see your location and you're like, mm, 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 it looks bad. If it looks bad, trust your gut. Just don't dive. Don't make yourself miserable. Diving is one of those things that you want to be comfortable. You want to have good conditions and you can't be afraid to just scrap the dive. In the past two weeks, Jay and I have scrapped two dives um, on both of the ones that we went to. We did try one because the entry was super easy, but the visibility was absolute crap. Um, so at least give yourself the best opportunity to have the best dive and at least evaluate the conditions. This one's actually really good, but I do think there's going to be some visibility issues here just based on the swell chart, but probably not too bad one if you can hit 30 to 60 feet. So keep that in mind. Keep your bottom in mind, whether it's sandy or silty or rocky, and you'll have a good dive. Okay, let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, give me some pointers because diving is definitely one of those things that you're always learning. If you... Um, have any other things that you do in particular, I'd love to hear about them. Okay. Bye, everybody.